Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about life cycle of a razor component. And razor components are like pages in razor apps. So basically I'll be talking about page cycle, right? So the very first method which gets called is uninitialized. And uninitialized is a synchronous function. So if you have, if you want to pull something from app settings or if you want to set title or if you want to set a paragraph in your page, this is the best method to call. This is the best method to overwrite and you can assign those parameters. You can assign those properties and then show on your page. But there is an asynchronous function too, which gets called after uninitialized. And in this method, you can make API calls or you can, you can make database calls because this is an asynchronous function. So this will wait for, wait for the response. Um, and yeah, so after this event, on parameter set event gets called. And uh, every component has parameters. So you can pass these parameters in route. You can set these parameters when you have nested components. And we have control over, over that event where you can override this event and then manipulate the parameters and use them the way you want to use them, right? And there is also an asynchronous version of this event where you can deal with database or API calls and depending on what kind of parameter it is, you can manipulate the parameter and make your calls. The next event which gets called is on after render event. And this is an event which is like the last chance to check if you have all the data that you were trying to pull from database or from API. And if you don't have that data, then you can again, um, again, re-render your page and then try to call those APIs and make sure, you know, keep on calling it until you have the data to show on your page. And there is also an asynchronous version of this function, which gets called after, after render event. And there are two more functions. One function is should render. This function gets called, this is an, uh, you can override this function, and uh, this function gets called when you change the state of your page. And you can also call this function called the state has changed function, and you can call this function, and this will call this should render event, which will, which after this event, page gets rendered, and then it calls on after render event and on after render async event. So this way you can reload your UI components. You can reload, let's say if your dropdown has in filled, so you can, uh, you can call state has changed and this will call should render and uh, it will again go through the cycle of on after render and on after render async. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about this function when I show, the, show you the demo. Um, the last function that I want to talk about is dispose, and uh, you can implement uh, i disposable, and uh, that way you can have handle over dispose function. And this function gets called when you lead the page, when you go, when you move on to some other page. If you navigate to some other page, then this function gets called, and all the properties in the component they get disposed. But sometimes you use singleton. Uh, services and you set parameters to these services and there's like only one instance throughout the application and you want to clean that uh, instance before you leave the UI then this is the best time this is the best event where you get rid of all the all the parameters that you have set on your singleton event all right so let's look at our demo now um, so people who follow me on YouTube they know that I've been working on this authors page and um, I have uh, I have this authors page where user takes uh, puts input and saves and then it gets saved in this table. Um, and what I've done here in my code, I have um, I have overridden all the functions that we talked about on initialized, on initialized async, on parameter, on parameter async, on render, after render, after render. I have called all the all the functions here and. Uh, what I've done, I have written console write line in all the functions so that we know the page cycle of our Blazor app. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to go to home page, and then uh, let me see if this is cleared out or not, okay? And when I'm 
click on authors, then you can see that on initialized, on initialized async, on parameter set, on parameter set async, on on after render async, these functions are getting called one by one, right? That's so this is the page cycle of your author's page. So how do we how do we use these uh, life cycle? How do we make our users life easier using this life cycle method? Um, in my last video, I talked about if my service is down, then user, um, then I'm checking on save. If my service is down, then it shows the message, oops, something went wrong and please contact system administration. Uh, so what if I want to show this message on page load? I don't want user to wait until, I don't want user to enter data and then find out that there is something wrong with the service. I want to show this error message right away so that I'm saving users time and then also I will have a better understanding what's going on in my service. To handle that, what I could do, I could go to my server validation uh, component, which I used, uh, uh, which I created in my last video so that I could reuse it across my application. What I could do is in my server validation component on on parameter set async function, I could set, I could change some parameters here. I couldn't say I can call author service check connection function, which I do not have that function, but I totally write that function. And let's say it's returning false. That means it will go and say that, oops, something went wrong on parameter async event. And I'm gonna say it was, is visible too, so that I can see, see the error too. All right, let's run this and see how this works. So when I go to authors page, you can see that it's showing message that oops, something went wrong. See that this is how I can save so much time of user and user won't have to think that they entered something wrong. And that's the reason why this error is coming on page load itself. They know that something has gone wrong and they have to contact me. Right. And that's, that's how I can make an efficient, uh, I can reuse my components and make efficient very easy application to use for. All right, you can also see that my dropdown is empty now. The reason why my dropdown is empty is uh, because I have commented the code on, on after render async. You can see that uh, wherever I was getting city from my JavaScript, I've commented that code. Uh, the reason why I commented that code is because I was calling state has changed event. Let's uncomment and see what happens. I'm going to run this. And I'll go and clear out the output window here. And when I click on authors, you can see my cities are getting loaded now. But in output window, you can see what's happening. You can see this is our first page cycle. And just because I'm calling state has changed, it's calling should render event. And this render event checks if it should re-render the page or not. And if this returns true, then it goes ahead and re-renders the page. And it calls on after uh, render and on after render async again. But the second time you can see the first render was true here. And the second render is saying false. You can see the first render, which is a... Um, which is an argument which comes, um, which comes on the previous method and shows that the first render is true or false. That, that's what I'm showing in my console right line. All right, but this is an extra step in on my author space. This is not very efficient. Just because I want to load a dropdown, I have to re-render my whole author's page. So how do we fix that? To fix that, what I've done, I have created a select city component and which has the same dropdown that I have. Basically, I'm trying to reuse select city. I'm trying to reuse the dropdown that's on author's page and I could use it across my application. And here uh, on the select city component, I have this function on after render and this is where I'm loading my cities now. So we do not have to call, we do not have to call this function anymore. Uh, we do not have to load JavaScript. 
what you can do and I'm gonna get rid of my drop down here and instead of that I'm gonna call my component I'm gonna call select city and see let's see what happens now so I'm gonna go and clear my output window first clear all and when I click on authors you can see that my cities are getting loaded and you can see the page cycle of my author is normal again I don't have to re-render authors page just because I had to load a drop down that's how you can have an efficient now this drop down will have its own life cycle but drop down is very tiny and this component is very lightweight so you don't have to reload the whole thing and that's how you can make lightweight components and you can reuse these components across your application because in my publisher uh, publisher page I already have a drop down where I need city I could totally use the save drop down in my publishers page too that's that's how you can achieve efficiency on your page and you can make your application consistent and it will just look the same throughout the application all right um, the last thing that I want to talk about is um, this dispose function this dispose function if you want to use the dispose function you will have to you will have to implement i disposable and this function is writing a line saying that this dispose function has been called and you can see like i said uh, most all the parameters that you're assigning that you're creating in a component they get disposed but if you're injecting a service like i author service which is a singleton service and if, I, if you're setting any properties of uh, any properties of author service in this page and you want to clean that out you can totally use this function you can totally do that in this function in dispose function so let's see when this function gets called this function gets called when we leave the page so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna clean this out I'll go to authors and clean it out and when I go to a different page then you can see that author dispose function is getting called and that's how you can handle all these lifecycle events in your blazer app if you have any questions put it in the comment section you can reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit. I have mentioned all the links in the description. Uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching this video. See you soon.